Okay, um, Dubai, Deo. I'm just going to talk about something that you might think is not uh, usual or common. But I would challenge you to understand that it's something that touches on every one of you completely. Because health is something that touches each one of us. My topic is communication will cure health care. Let me start with a few things. I would like to take you to the root of the idea that I have. And in the root of the idea, there's a few things I will say. Do you know I actually became a doctor on a day? Somebody said I did, and that's why I became a doctor. Okay, surprising, right? But well, let me tell you why. I started out as an artist. You bring a sheet of paper here now, and give me a pen, I will very quickly draw a face for you. And it will look lifelike. And I was wondering, what do I do with it? What do I do with it? But somewhere along the line, I had this wonderful father of mine, who I had told one simple story when I was little, about how I injured, how somebody got injured, and then I wasn't afraid of the blood, and I was able to help out. So my loving dad stopped the idea he's going to be a doctor. Fast forward into time. I got, I finished the secondary school, and then the time to enter school came. I got geology, I got architecture, I got medicine. I was registering for medicine, uh, for geology. And simply because, you know, oil company. Then a friend convinced me that architecture would also be nice. I started looking into registering for architecture. Then having a drink with my friends, one day a statement came out. I dare you, you cannot read medicine because you are cheating, you are afraid. Suffice it to say, by the next day, I jumped into my friend's car. Driver took us, and before I knew what was going on, I was registering for medicine. Lo and behold, see me, I'm here. The picture there says, I graduated. I graduated. That's me taking a note. Okay, it didn't end there. I almost gave up studying medicine while in school. Some of the pictures you will see there will show you. If you go back and understand, can you see that's me? Part of the confusion. At a point, I tried to take on martial arts while in medical school. Okay, if you go to the next picture, you will see a very contemplative me, wondering, what was I doing here? At a point, I was a jeans-wearing, t-shirt-wearing, medical student with a face cap, growing dreadlocks right on the face cap. That's how confused I was, because there was the artist in me, and then there was a science student. Let me go back a little to make you understand the kind of confusion that was existing. I was the student who had A1 in additional mathematics and A1 in finance. I'm sure there are quite a few people here who can identify what I'm talking about. So please, part of what I'm going to say here is don't give up. Don't give up. There is a bridge between what you feel and what wakes you up in the night and what you are reading. I found it. I found it. And that is what has given me the courage to come and talk to you about it. Because not just finding it, I am working in it, I'm trying to find a solution for Nigeria right now. And what I found was healthcare communication. Let's look a little bit more into healthcare communication. The thing that took me into healthcare communication was public health, community medicine. I suddenly came across some phrases like health infotainment, health entertainment. Finally, there was a way out. And I went right into it. 
and never look back. Because suddenly there was hope for me. Okay, let's look at health. What is health? If I ask what is health, some of you will immediately think what is on the next slide. The absence of disease, isn't it? That's the logical thing to say health is the absence of disease. But let me tell you what the WHO, that big organization that has brought all the world together concerning things around health, what they say health is. They have decided that health is a state of complete physical, social, and mental well-being, and not just the absence of disease. That's the WHO. But I tell you, as time went on, that definition couldn't stand anymore. Gradually, experts came together, and it has changed. What health is now called is this. The ability to adapt and to self-manage in the face of social, physical, and emotional challenges. That is the current definition of health. The ability to adapt and to self-manage in the face of social, physical, and emotional challenges. Work with me and you will see where I'm going. There is another concept I want to share with you. Health promotion. So many conferences, so many discussions within countries went on and on about what is health and how can you promote it. After a lot of going round up and down and everything, they came down to a definition for health promotion. I picked the one that I felt was really good for us, and it is this. Enabling people to increase control over the determinants of their own health. Over the determinants of their own health. Remember, health is now defined as the ability to adapt and to self-manage in the face of social, physical and emotional challenges. And now health promotion is enabling people to increase control over the determinants of their own health. So, individuals are suddenly appearing in health. Individuality. The patient can now take part in health. The patient can now be part of the decision. Work with me. Because of all this kind of thinking, the world has now settled down on a concept. And that concept is called patient-centered care. The recognition is now growing, patient-centered care. There's a new thinking worldwide. And that thinking is that patients should participate in their healthcare from diagnosis to treatment and beyond. The patient should participate from diagnosis to treatment and beyond. Okay. We've understood all these things, right? Let us now look at how communication starts to come in. Let's see what information is. What is information? But I will talk about information from the context of health. It is the lifeblood of healthcare. The lifeblood of healthcare. In other words, healthcare cannot exist without information. And it needs to be exchanged. Okay, let's come to the word communication. In the context of health, what is communication? My simple definition is this. Communication is the heart that pumps information. So, you have information, the lifeblood of healthcare, and then you have communication, the heart that pumps the information. That means this heart is what pumps this lifeblood of healthcare. So the question I have for you right now is, with everything that I have said, what is communication to you? What is communication to you? I tell you, if you look at all the definitions of communication in the context of healthcare and so on and so forth, you will keep finding so many definitions and so many things. But you see, the beauty about all the ideas that you can have in the world is that you can summarize it to something that seems quite working for your own environment. So I choose to pick this definition for communication. 
The question you ask yourself is, from what you are thinking about communication, is it an art? Is it a science? Remember, I was in that mix. Am I an artist or am I a scientist? Okay, so communication has that controversy also. Is it an art? Is it a science? But let's choose a definition for communication. The exchange of information between individuals or machines by the art of speaking, writing, or a common system of signs and behaviors. Somebody will ask, why did I mention behavior? Simple thing I will use to illustrate it is this. The women who are in this audience, I know that there is one way you have to communicate your displeasure to your husband. Look at this scenario. A man leaves the house without dropping some money for lunch to be prepared. And then he comes back home feeling really proud and happy with himself. And then he sees his wife in this mood. The next question comes, is there any problem? What's the usual answer? No, no problem. <laughs> and it's like this. No problem. So what I'm saying is that no greater experts of body language exists than the woman. So with your behavior, you can communicate. So you see, several aspects exist. We have looked at health, we have looked at communication. So what have I been saying all this while? What have I been saying? What I'm simply saying is that the absence of communication in healthcare is like developing a fatal heart disease. Yes, it can kill healthcare, the absence of communication. So, let's look at healthcare communication together. First, I want to let you know it's, it's not a new idea. It's been there. Lots of countries have considered it, discussed it, had big conferences on it, and so on and so forth. But in all that mix and everything, you can still bring one definition for healthcare communication. It's a bit long, but bear with me. A multifaceted and multidisciplinary approach to establishing shared meaning with intended audiences of health related information with the goal of influencing. Now we'll come back to the definition again. Influencing their ability to adapt and self manage in the face of social, physical, and emotional challenges and to improve health outcomes. The people who we said are there, let me remind you, is you and I. You and I. The communities that we live in, the health professionals that uh, attend to us, special groups, the policymakers, and the general public. Let me go back a little bit to the misdirection and the redirection that I suffered in the course of my own career. I used to think that the solutions were in gathering of hard health evidence. Some discussion I had earlier on, some people were saying that the problem with healthcare was the lack of data. Lack, the problem with healthcare in our country was lack of data. So, in my own personal career, I toyed with some important sounding areas of medicine. Then suddenly I realized that all the evidence in the world, all the evidence in the world, meant nothing to a poor petty trader on the streets if that information was misunderstood. It didn't make any sense if it was misunderstood. So, that was my problem. Let me challenge you here now. Just sit back and think. To the last time you entered an organization where after your transactions there you came out and you felt good. If you find it a bit difficult to think of such an organization, just think about some of the banks that we have. Even if the internet was not working, even if the computer was not working well, even if you didn't get paid, there was this good feeling and this rush that you got when even the gate man at the door says, thank you for banking with us. Do you remember? It makes you feel good. It makes you feel important. Just as you are walking out from the bank. Thank you for banking with us. 
Do you think it happened by mistake? No. Because even that man telling you thank you for backing with us has problems like you do. But he's forced to make you put a smile on his face and say thank you for backing with us. Because he wants you to come back and bring more money into that organization from where he gets paid. Good. So what's the trend worldwide? There is a trend worldwide now. Healthcare organizations are considering effective patient provider communication as an organizational priority and setting up strategies to address patients' communication needs across the continuum of care, diagnosis, treatment, and beyond. How are patients' communication needs being addressed? So let's come down to our country. In my country, I am dressed like the culture of my country. In my country, there are some questions. Two very important ones. Are the patient's communication needs being considered in this country? Is any attention being given to communication skills assessment and training for healthcare providers? I have an answer for you. Unfortunately, unlike in other clients, our experts have not come together to consider and examine the problem and to chart a course. So, what do we do? There is a gap and we need to fill it. There is a gap. We need to look inward at what moves us. And the best way to illustrate to you about looking inward at what moves us is think about the Ebola scare. Think about the time of Ebola. One of the earlier speakers talked about the Ebola time and the issue of salt. But let me say something about that time. The salt issue was communication. I happened to be in a process right at that time, leading senior managers of healthcare in one of the states in a managerial process. The news about salt dropped. And right there while I was talking to these people making a presentation, over half of my audience suddenly stood up and walked out. I had to stop what I was saying to find out what the problem was. Lo and behold, they told me they were urgently needing to go and get salt. Because a traditional ruler known to them had instructed that they should not just get the salt, they should back it and should send it to every member of their family wherever that person was. And the call that came into that meeting came from the US. So a Nigerian in the US got the information about the song, called a relative right in my meeting to go get salt. The man spread the information around and everybody there thought it was important to leave that meeting where we are discussing important managerial processes for healthcare in that state. And then use these traditional rulers, teach them the correct things, and they be the ones to pass the information across. And I tell you, it was used in that Ebola time. Our management was, with such expertise that I tell you now, that you know that the Ebola response of Nigeria is being studied in some medical schools as managerial responses to epidemics. So what happened to us then? We innovated, we exchanged ideas, and we overcame. But what happened next? We stopped communicating. We stopped communicating. Despite the fact that we stopped communicating, we lost people like a very strong woman. Somebody who communicated, Stella Adabi. She communicated and she said no to Ebola and it didn't happen. So, what's our solution? What's our solution? The solution is this policymaker to policymaker, policymaker to healthcare provider, healthcare provider to healthcare provider, healthcare provider to patients. Patients to healthcare provider, patients to patients, patients to policy makers. There is one message. 
one message only. And that message is this. The healthcare system has one customer. One customer. Whether you are the policy maker, whether you are the provider, whether you are the patient. One customer. Because when the tables are turned, the healthcare provider becomes a patient. When the tables are turned, the policy maker becomes a patient. How would you want the hospital and the healthcare system to serve you? Make it serve you the way you want it to serve you. Because that customer is me. You is the customer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr.